Uh, good morning, everyone. This is Joe Feria Galicia. I'm with the Berkeley Resource Center for Online Education. Good morning, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so this workshop, this is workshop three in a series that we're hosting um, on campus. Uh, it's accessible Microsoft Word documents, and this is actually a prerequisite for a couple of the other um, future workshops that we're having on Adobe Acrobat. Um, in order to create an accessible Adobe Acrobat file, it's best to start with an accessible Word file. So we're going to build on today's work for future workshops as well. Um, and we're recording this so that if someone couldn't make it physically here, they could go through the process and get the skills. And um, we actually created a B course for this. So it's the Alley Workshop B course. And we made it so that uh, anyone on campus with a uh, count it ID could log in. So the bottom, uh, the last bullet on there, um, it has the enroll slash HRFFRL addition to the URL, and uh, that'll get you in automatically. And I'm going to go ahead and send this out as well, but if you're not currently in the course, and uh, Israel, I'm going to ask you to, um, to log into this as well on your PC. Um, if you could get there. So if you're, if you're not in the course, use the, uh, the, I guess it's the third bullet. Use the URL there. And Lucy, you're already in this one, so yeah. you're good. Um, but what I did is I added the PowerPoint and a work file um, as well, an unremediated Word file. So we're going to try to get as much hands-on today as possible. Because um, th the reality is, once you start doing remediation, um, you're going to forget stuff as well. So we're recording this so they can go back to it. And the more practice you get, the more confident you're going you're to become, just like learning a language, pretty much. So once uh, Anna and uh, Israel let me know that they're in, um, I'll go ahead and move forward. In the meantime, I will humor you with small talk. <laughs> Okay, that's okay. So um, if you weren't able to make the first two accessibility workshops, they're also on this course. Um, I'll be able to demonstrate it in, uh, in just a minute as well. Okay, so Anna's on there. Um, just a, uh, well, it, um, as long as you're in the class, it's the same. It's the URL. So the, the URL for the actual course is the, the second bullet. The third bullet is if you haven't been enrolled yet. Oh, got it. Okay, so the one with the number. Then, yes. The yeah, that's the actual course. Okay. You're in, um, Alicia? Yeah. Okay. All right, so Israel, I'm just waiting to see, uh, for you to give me the thumbs up yeah. when you get on there. All right, so we're ready to move here. So today's goals are to identify how a screen reader user navigates a document. So um, we have... Um, uh, the, the head honcho on campus in terms of screen reader accessibility, uh, Lucy Greco. I think we should, we should give her applause. <laughs> so she's going to show us how um, an unremediated file is for her. And then um, at the end of the workshop, after um, participants had a chance to remediate the file, we're going to give it to her and she's going to uh, use her screen reader to navigate it again so that we could see the difference of so before and after. Um, I'm going to show you how to configure Word for remediation, uh, become familiar with the style tool, and uh, we'll add metadata, remediate the file, and then I'll show you how to export to Ac Adobe Acrobat. I'm not going to go into the tagging detail um, for Adobe Acrobat. That is a whole separate workshop, and that's the next one. Um, but uh, I'll just show you where, where to locate the, the different ways to export it. And uh, the last goal is to build community amongst UC Berkeley staff and employees interested in accessibility. So that's, that's a long-term goal. And it starts with both us being here in person, but also having access to that accessibility course, because we could do some asynchronous communication in there as well. And then I think another part that goes with that is that nobody on campus could be an expert in all aspects of accessibility. And the easiest way to 
uh, to um, overcome some of the obstacles is if you could pick up a, uh, the phone or email someone that you know directly to respond to a problem that's immediate. Um, and then so that it, when you remove those barriers right away, it just helps motivate you to continue with that work. And so the face-to-face the -face and the asynchronous communication is really important for that. All right, so um, we're gonna start with introductions and then we'll, I'm gonna demonstrate the accessibility workshop course and then we'll go into the screen reader demo and then um, I'll go ahead and we're gonna switch back and then I'll start showing you how to configure Word for remediation. Um, okay, so we're ready for a screen reader demo. So I'm gonna stop sharing screen and uh, see if Lucy could start sharing hers. Zoom Pro account row one. Accessibility quick. Accessibility quick. Restore. Accessibility quick start. Gener okay, is that up on the screen now? Yeah. Okay, everybody can hear it. Or should we go a little louder? <clears throat> I think we're good. I think that's a good volume. One point two five inches. Oops. Everyone hear that? <laughs> yeah. 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 Sound is good. Yeah. Okay, so there are two modes for a screen reader. So first of all, I want to say is Word is the most accessible format, even without remediation. Word itself is something that actually works incredibly easy for a person with a screen reader. And the stuff we're going to show you today makes it a fast process. So an unremediated document can be read to a point and can have fairly straightforward ease of use. But the things we're gonna show you today are gonna to make that document more logical and more navigable. So say for example, this was a textbook instead of just a small file like it is. How does a person get from chapter to chapter? How does a person understand a diagram, a chart, or a table? Those kinds of things are what we're gonna work with. Can you talk this way? Oh, sorry, I'm facing the room. <laughs> That's okay, we'll get up there audio this way. Okay, sorry. All right, so um, let's start by just listening to the file a little bit so everybody can kind of get a, a feel for the sound of the screen reader. Graphic. And I'm gonna turn it on to browse mode so I don't mess it up. And what that means is it's just a way for me to review the file and use my keyboard with, and be able to use different keyboard commands without actually typing in the document. So here we go, let's listen to it. Graphic Accessibility Quick Start Guide The following guidelines and recommendations facilitate accessibility within the multiple platforms. Headings Sources Link Aaron Blaubelt University of Illinois Out of Link Link Web Access Out of Link Overview Screen Reader Users Browse Sections of a Page, Website, or Learning Management System LMS, Using Headings and Subheadings H1, H2, H3, H4, etc. Including properly nested headings on a page adds semantic structure and provides an essential organization for navigation. Okay, so everybody I think has a sense of the voice now. Can you all understand it? Is it too fast, too no, slow? Sounds good. Okay, how about you Israel? You got it back there? It's all right. Thank okay. You. All right, so Joe, this is completely unremediated? Except for the links. The links are self-describing. Yeah, okay, that's good. So I noticed there was a heading back there. I want to go see what that heading is again. I'm going to use my keyboard to navigate to that heading. No previous heading. There are no headings. Uh-oh. No next heading. There are no headings whatsoever on this. So if I wanted to know what title, what the title of the section I was in, it doesn't exist. Um, let me see. There was a graphic. I wanted to hear what that graphic was. Graphic. That graphic has no label on it. I have no idea what that graphic does, is, or how it, what it contains. Is there other graphics? Graphic. Graphic. So as you can tell, there's, there's a lot of information here that I'm missing. I don't know what these graphics are. I don't know what they're doing. And let's see, what else can I locate to maybe help understand this? I think that covers it for now. So let's uh, let's move on and let's come back to this and we'll remediate it later or check the remediated file later. Do you want me to stop sharing, Joe? Um, I think if I start sharing my screen. I don't think so. Workshop three, work yeah. Zoom Pro accounts, static. 
Tab control. Yeah, you have to stop it. Status. Busy. Settings button. Back to meeting button. Scheduled button. Oh, back to meeting. Back to meeting. Yeah. Running application. And stop share. Zoom participant. Good to know confusion. Okay, so that was a screen reader demonstration. And uh, Lucy, overall, um, how what, what kind of experience was that for you? Pretty basic. I mean, sad to say that that's pretty much what I get 99% of the time. Uh, but it was, it was, I could read the content, but I couldn't quickly move through the content. So, you know, if that was a textbook, I would find that painful. So you would be able to do it, but the amount of time that you would have to invest in it would be... Exactly. Okay. Okay, so let's take care of that for her. Um, let me go to the next. And, and let me clarify that a bit, Joe, is the amount of time I'd have to invest just to see if it was worth my while was what's, you know, I couldn't even tell that it was worth my while because I couldn't skim the file even. You couldn't skim it. Okay. So next we're going to configure Word. And... Um, what I want to start on is uh, having you start looking at Word files using the draft view. And um, we're going to look, also make sure we see all of the paragraphs. And um, I also want you to be aware of fonts, like right from the beginning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to front load this font um, uh, recommendation. This is actually coming from uh, the US government Health and Human Resources uh, website. They have a checklist. I have a link to it on the uh, uh, accessibility workshop for this particular workshop already. Um, but uh, they're recommending these uh, sans serif fonts, which are fonts without too much uh, curvature or, or twirlies at the end. So they're easily, more easily readable, uh, especially for people with uh, dyslexia, right, Lucy? Yes. Yeah. So their recommendations are Times New Roman, Verdana, Aereo, Tahoma, Helvetica, and Calibri. The other thing about these fonts is that uh, they're, they're most likely to, to be in both Windows and Mac formats or platforms. Um, and also, they're fairly web friendly. So um, your browser isn't going to have to go and substitute things if you're using these. Um, we're also going to look at metadata. And um, uh, this metadata, like the, the uh, in the properties, like the title, the subject, the author, especially the language, are important for screen reader users to have access as well. And then they also, if you get used to adding metadata to your Word files and you're uploading them to the internet, they will increase your um, searchability as well on Google. Um, so what is that um, called again, Lucy? The SEO. 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 So search it's engine optimization. Search engine optimization. All right. Thank you, Anna, because I could never remember what it stood for. <laughs> and that's huge right now, right? All the rage. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna get out of um, the PowerPoint and then I'm gonna move over to actually let me get to um, what should they open? Um, well, they're ready on the on the course. So let me get to B course. Oops. Okay, so just a really quick demonstration of um, the accessibility course. And again, the goal of this is to archive all our progress and to make it available for those who weren't able to attend or if someone was able to attend, to have a place for them to kind of reflect back and get uh, some of the documents and resources that we provided. Um, last uh, workshop was workshop two. Um, is your web content accessible? And uh, the logistics are on there, the learning objectives, 
There's actually a video, a YouTube video, the transcript. You could download the PowerPoint. And then there's also resources that we use for that particular workshop. An important thing to, to, to add on here that the, the other workshop doesn't have is the content for the discussion. And um, I'm going to, uh, I'm showing the, the discussion right now, but I also added a little update on here about automated, automa automated testing tools. Um, and because after the workshop, um, one of our guests here, Anna, was able to go through and do a comparison between, that wasn't you? It was Caroline. Caroline. Okay. Um, who is on Anna's team. Got to give you credit there somehow. Who, is, um, who was able to look at the testing tools that we used and then to look at Axe and Ten Tenyon. And uh, she did some comparisons and she wanted to make sure that we talk about this term uh, false positives and false negatives because uh, code sniffer and HTML, um, well, HTML code sniffer and the um, ally uh, tool, uh, both demonstrated false positives when looking at certain websites. So there were some things like um, when, you're, when you have some items that are um, labeled with, the, with ARIA presentation, that wasn't being picked up by uh, totally. Um, and, uh, or something might not be picked up by the HTML code sniffer. Whereas uh, she felt that uh, Tenyon um, and the Axel were better at not reporting some of the po false positives. Um, but there's something called triangulation when you're doing research anyways. So you do want to get different sources and see which, um, what are some of the consistent errors that are coming up as well. So this is really important because this is something that we learned after the fact, after the workshop. And the discussion section of uh, this particular course allows us to provide that information to those who attended or those who are interested in this so that we could keep building. The other thing that that signifies is that uh, we're, we're a learning community and we shouldn't be afraid to share alternative information or to, or to accept critique as well. So this is a place for that so that we could continue to grow as a community. Really important to demonstrate. Um, so let me go back to the accessibility workshop. Go back to um, the navigation. I'm going to go to uh, workshop three. And I just want to show that uh, the workshop three PowerPoint is already downloadable. Um, after Scott and his team get a chance to edit this, this video, the video of this will be in here as well. And then we're going to make sure it's captioned and we'll provide a transcript. Um, and in the resource section, I already have um, something from the high tech uh, center uh, that's uh, out of Cupertino. And a Geyer is a Geyer Dietrich? Dietrich. Dietrich. She runs that and they provide free workshops um, uh, on accessibility, a lot of different platforms. Um, and software. Uh, Tracy and I had the, the great honor of being there for a PDF workshop and on forums, um, but they have uh, an archive. So I've already archived to their formatting with Microsoft Word 2017. They updated it 2012. Um, but that has a lot of fine grain details on how to configure Microsoft Word. We're not going to have time to get into a lot of those details, but it's there for you. Um, there's also a web aim website um, on Microsoft Word and it's really easy, really handy. So I have that linked in there. And then there's also a checklist, a 508 checklist that the US Department of Health and Human Services provides. That's also very handy um, to go by, quote, to go through. Um, so those are already in there. And then also there's the unremediated Microsoft Word file. So I'm going to collect, I'm going to um, select that first. And I'm going to ask uh, everyone here who's doing this um, to also select that and to go ahead and open it. Uh, the first thing that, that pops up is the file. And then it's asking me on the very top to enable editing if I want to do anything. So let's do that. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just pause there, make sure that um, uh, Anna and Israel are, are with me here. Um, all right, got a thumbs up from the back. And uh, all right, great. All right, so this is where um, 
My goal is to give you an overview of how to configure Word first. I'll show you some things on styling, and then um, I'm going to let you all have your go at it and start styling this, this document um, on your own. And then I'll be able to walk around and help guide you on this. Um, and then at the end, um, either Anna or Israel or both of you will um, uh, send me that file or I'll have you upload it. And then Lucy was going to take a, take a look at it and we'll see the difference. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is change my glasses. I gotta get my reading glasses out here, so I'm gonna start. Uh, I need to get it close to this, all right. Okay, so um, I want you to first go to the draft view. So if you go to view and then we hit, we select the draft option it doesn't look very different at all right now. That's because we haven't configured the advanced properties. So if you could look up here, I'm going to go through this uh, step by step on the, on the very top and then I'll, I'll say it orally as well. On the file option, there is um, uh, options at the very bottom on the left hand navigation. And then it opens up a new word uh, window that says word options. Under word options, we want to go to the advanced. Again, it's a left navigation. And then I'm going to scroll down. Um, there's a display section. And then there's a, a, a formatting part that says uh, style area pane with width and draft and outline views. So what I'm going to do right now is it's right now it says zero inches and I'm going to put in 1.5. Um, that's my preference. You could put one, you could put a little bit lower, you could put two. Um, 1.5 is, is, I found it to be kind of a safe um, number. What does it change, Joe? Um, let me just make sure that Israel and Anna are ready. Okay. Alicia's good. Okay. And I'm going to say, okay. And then what it changes is on the draft view, now on the left navigation or on the left hand column, it opens up a whole column and everything on here or most things are saying normal until we get to where the bullets are at and then on there it's saying list paragraph. Okay, so this is how we could see the styles at one glance without having to go to the style, the style pane. So this, this is something that Geyer showed us uh, about three years ago when we did an ADA workshop. Um, also notice though that the graphics have disappeared in the draft view. Um, that's okay. It, it, it's only v disappearing from the draft view. It's still there. And in this particular case, the, it's, a, it's styled as a normal. It's still there, but um, we can't really do anything with it with the styling pane, so it just it just disappears um, from from view. So the one point five is the width of that column. Yes. So if the column is too narrow, make it wider. Yes. Okay. All right. So is everyone ready? All right. So now what I want to do is uh, on the top navigation, there's a home option, and there's a little arrow. Um, to the left of the editing option. And um, I hovered over it and it's showing that there's a styles and it's also saying um, alt plus control plus shift plus S will get this out. So let me um, select that and now the styles pane is, is showing. All right, so now we get to uh, see what's happening here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to select the first line and it's uh, on the styles it's saying that um, it has Latin Palatino linotype showing. Um, what I, I want to and then also on um, up on the very top uh, on the on within the home panel it's saying that it's Palatino linotype type 20. 
Um, if I use the down arrow, there's a, what we call is an empty return. So there's a, it's saying it's normal, but there's no content there. And um, I'm going to ask Lucy to, to chime in here. What are, what are some of the problems for, with empty returns and screen readers? Uh, I get the word blank if I'm arrowing through the document. All right. So it'll just say blank to her, and that yeah. could, what is it, annoying? Or does if it? If I'm arrowing through, it, it, it increases the keystrokes I have to do, for one. And it does get annoying to hear blank, blank, blank. So if you have more than one of those, it's actually the most annoying. One can. One can be helpful, more can be annoying. Okay, so then I'm getting to the next section. And then just notice um, on the styles, it went to pattern clear white. And then um, on the, in the home section, it's saying this is Cambria body 12. So even though it's styled as normal, we went from um, you know, a 20 point font, Palatino, um, to now to a 12 point font and Cambria. So what this is indicating is that inline styling is being used. And inline styling is something that I recommend that we all avoid, whether you're styling a Word document or a website. The reason for that is that it's more efficient to use style sheets. Um, on the web, you have cascading style sheets. Um, and uh, or, you know, some, some um, LMSs have default, most LMSs have default styles for what is a normal style or what is a heading one, a heading two. Let's let the platform take care of that because we could, if we want to change that in the future, we could do that um, all in one shot instead of going line by line by line by line. So it'll, it's just more time efficient to, to avoid inline styling altogether. Well, and also, Joe, if we'll note, I'll go up to the top of the document. Once I'm in the document. Zoom, Zoom Pro Workshop 3. Accessibility. Accept. Graph. So I'll read this first line. Accessibility Quick Start Guide. Blank. There's a blank line. The following guidelines and recommendations. And there's no difference for that. That's all text to me. I don't know that one's a title and one's text. So there's no way for me to know that that is actually different the accessibility quick start guide is any different than the body of this. Because the font is bigger, it doesn't tell me anything about that. I could go hunting for it, but I don't care to. Okay, and so our goal is to, is to make our time as professionals providing the material more efficiently used, but also for the end user to be able to navigate it in an efficient way as well. Um, okay, so I just want to make, make it a point that this has inline styling. Um, and I'm, all I'm doing is scrolling down and, um, and things are changing within that. Anna, you have a question? Yeah, and I just, this is just one more. How do you even apply inline styles in, in a Word document? Um, okay, so if I were to um, highlight it, and then um, on that home section, I could change from 12 to 22. Uh -huh. I could change the color. Sure. So uh, using a little ribbon. Bold. Yeah, that's right. The, so the you're ribbon. Not supposed to use those? Um, let's let's try not to use those. Let's use it sparingly. Okay. Um, again, that's. I mean, thank you for saying that. Actually, I mean, that's like. I mean, most of us always use that. Mm -hmm. But if you're, um, let's say, you're formatting a twenty-page document, and you're updating it every year, mm -hmm. and next year you want to use a different accessible font or different color scheme, different spacing, mm -hmm. instead of doing it line by line, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to use the style, um, the style pane mm -hmm. to do it basically universally. Okay. Cool. So most people who work on a, a master's thesis or a, or a PhD um, a dissertation, they're required to use styling, styles because of the consistency. Um, but also it's all, it's more efficient as well. Okay. And uh, one other point as well is that publishers know all about styling because it's consistent. Mm -hmm. Problem with publishers is they're not providing that uh, embedded uh, PDF um, in an accessible way as well. They're doing all the work up front, but it seems like they're purposely blocking um, this. So once we get that and we're going to export it, a lot of uh, uh, remediation specialists have to come back and restyle it 
for um, accessibility. Okay, so I went ahead and um, when Anna was talking, I, I changed the font size and the color um, to the, the second line. And um, what I'm gonna do is uh, use, I could use the, the home ribbon and select the clear all formatting and it, it took all the inline styling out. Um, so I could also, you know, highlight a big section um, and hit that uh, clear all formatting and do it that way. And, um, or I could select all um, and let me see if I could do this on here. I'm obviously a Mac user. Select. I'm selecting all and then okay. um, I could clear formatting there. Also on the right hand side on the styles, there's a clear all there as well. So that's one way to get rid of everything. You could also select all, cut, paste, special, and remove, um, remove styles. Um, I'm going to do control Z um, to put it back one because I do want to see where my bullet bullets are at. All right. So I'm going to do a couple of the headings and then um, I'll talk about heading structure. I'm going to show you how to do the bullet list properly. And then uh, we're going to give you some more time. All right. So you, you all could do this with me as well. So um, I'm on the uh, accessibility quick start guide, which I'm going to format as a heading one. So what Lucy was talking about earlier is that there, there was no rhyme or reason to the document or semantic structure. And semantic structure is the way we organize the document to give it meaning. And that's going to be great for Lucy, but it's going to be good for all users. Because when we style headings a certain way, we're pointing out some of the more, um, the higher level ideas. Um, and then sub ideas within those so that someone could quickly scan through it. A lot of folks with learning disabilities gravitate to those or people who didn't do the reading the night before um, and are late to class and they're kind of skimming through. If you look through those headings, you could get the big ideas that way and then start skimming through get, and fill in the blanks um, with, with some specific information. So um, on the right hand side, it's only giving me um, a very few options right on here. Um, uh, you know, it's telling me 10 point, 14 point, normal list. Um, I want to see all the options that are available. So what I'm going to do is uh, go to the options uh, uh, section and then it opened a new panel and it's saying select styles to show in use. I'm going to change that to all styles. Okay, so if Anna and Israel could do that, and uh, Alicia, you got that? All right, and then I'm going to say okay. Now on that style pane, I could scroll down and I have all the styles, and there's so many of them. Um, the, um, and then if you notice um, on the heading section, um, I'm going to go ahead and select heading one, and the line that I was on went ahead and changed it and um, it changed it to times and 24 and I'm pretty sure it's using a black font. Um, the next line, I'm going to use the down arrow. It's still an empty return. Um, I'm going to delete that using the keyboard. I want that to go away. And then if you, you'll notice that after the heading, there's space that's been added between the heading and the next paragraph. That is in the style sheet for H1. Um, if you don't like that spacing or if you want to change it, we go to the style pane again. There's a, a when you hover over, there's an arrow there that we could um, select. And then we have the option to modify. So if Anna and Israel could do that with us. Isha's on it. Okay. It opens up a new pane. And this is where all the, the magic happens. Um, so this is where we can make sure we're using a, an accessible font. 
Um, times 24 is fine, um, uh, but you could go through and, and select all the fonts that have been installed on this particular computer. Um, uh, that's, this is kind of one of the reasons why I, I added the font list um, on the accessible course um, because I, I'm always going back to it. So I'm going to read them off. Times New Roman, Verdana, Arial, Tahoma, Helvetica, and Calibri. Um, these are the ones that are being recommended by that U.S. government site. I'm not going to argue with them. Um, I'll, I'll use these. What I could do, though, is that the H1, I, I could keep it as a Times New Roman, but maybe the H2 could be the Verdana, H3 could be the Aereo, and that'll help kind of diversify and distinguish those headings. And then I could also change those heading font sizes. Um, or I could also make the H1 bold and make the other ones not bold to help distinguish those. I could also indent the H2 or the H3 a little bit more. And then I could give spacing here and there before and after uh, to help differentiate those sections. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. But I did want to go ahead and highlight these. Times, Verdana, Aereo, Tahoma. So I'm going to switch back to uh, the Word file. And just a quick note, Joe. Yes. That any of these panes, so the different style types or the font list, all of those are keyboard navigable by hitting the first letter. So if you wanted to get to the headings in the style list, you could just hit H. Or if you're in the font list and you wanted to get to Verdana, you would just hit V. So these are all keyboard navigable. You don't need to always use your mouse. Okay, and you're talking about? The lists themselves. But everyone, you're not just talking about screen reader users. Yeah, I'm talking about for everyone. Okay, so keyboard shortcuts. That's kind of like on my uh, 2017, 2017 things to do. I need, I need to do, be better at keyboard shortcuts this year. Um, it does save time. Okay, so this is where, again, we could change um, the fonts. I'm going to go ahead and change the H1 to Times New Roman. 24 is great. Bo it's already bolded. We don't want to use underline in our styling. Just let the hyperlinks use underlines. Um, I'm not going to do um, uh, italics either. Um, it's already formatted for center. Um, I'm going to show you under format, there's this paragraph option. And I use this often. This is, uh, get used to this because this is where you could uh, do a little bit of indention. Um, and then the spacing, right now it says spacing af after it's on auto. Um, uh, I'm going to put that at 12 point for the H1. And the, the before as well, I'm going to put that at, uh, I'll do that 12 point. Um, the line spacing is set for uh, single right now. So I'm going to say OK. Hit OK. Um, there's my H1. My normal is set for Cam Cambria. Um, was that on that accessibility list? Cambria? Oh, it wasn't, huh? Let me go back. Cambria wasn't on there. So let's just be consistent. Um, so I'm going to go to normal. And I'm going to show you something that uh, this is something that I recently learned. And this is, again, thanks to Geyer. Um, one of the problems of using normal uh, in your styles is that everything seems to be based on that. All the other uh, styles go back to normal. Um, let, me, let me just highlight that. I'm going to go to H1 real quick, go to modify. And um, it says style based on normal within the, the modify pane, um, which means that later on, if I wanted, if I change normal, it's going to impact H1. So what Geyer was recommending is that I start using, let me get to this, uh, body text for, instead of using normal. And in that way, I could change the body text style without impacting my future um, styles or, or other, other level heading levels. Um, so I want to do that globally. Um, so I want to select all of my normal. So what I'm going to do is go up to my uh, head uh, home ribbon. I'm going to right click on there. 
and then it says select all 71 in instances. Does everyone see that? All right, so I'm gonna do that, and then now all of those are highlighted in the document. Notice that list paragraph isn't highlighted and H1 isn't. Um, and then all I'm gonna do is go ahead and hit um, body text on the right side on the styles, and then now all of those normals change to body text. All right, so now what I could do is go to the body text in that style pane, use that pull down, hit modify, and then um, my goal was to change Cambria to something um, more accessible, so I'll see if, yeah, that Calibri, um, just Calibri's fine, Calibri 12. I don't want this uh, blue color font on there, I'm gonna change that to black. And right now, um, notice that it's italicized, I'm gonna take the italicized off. And it looks like um, there's some other issues in the paragraph panel that I want to get to. So I'm going to go to that option. Instead of format, I'm going to go to paragraph. And notice how it's indented left, 0.8. So let's take that out. And uh, the right side is also set for 8. If I do want indention, I, uh, I usually go, oh no, that's not what I want. Um, indention is going to be, I think it's under, oh yeah, first line. You could, you could do first line, um, if you want a little bit of indention, uh, first line, ah, 0.2 or 0.1 works for me. Um, and then also, Joe, yes? Is it possible you're actually editing a different style? Um, let me say okay. Ah, okay, there you go. Thank you for that, Israel. That's right. Okay, so um, I was uh, one above, so I want body text. Okay, thank you for that. Um, again, that's part of being a, uh, in a learning community. We need to be able to uh, interject, especially on these uh, very uh, strategic moments. Uh, so thank you for that. All right, so um, let me go back to that. So Cambria, body, um, was that, I, I wanted Calibri, right? Yeah. Calibri. Let me delete that. And then um, I'm going to go to the format paragraph. Okay. So this is where I could do that indention, a little indention. First line, uh, point, point one works. Um, and then after the spacing, after I'm going to change that to 12. And then there's a little button that says don't add space between paragraphs of the same style. I'm going to do that for all of my uh, body text. Okay, and then I'm going to say okay. And then I'm just demonstrating how to use some of these features and some of the features that I often go to. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. I'm hoping actually that it is a little different so that when we go to share with Lucy that it is uh, visually it'll look different. Um, but we'll see how her user experience is. Okay, so I'm going to say okay, and um, Joe, do you recommend doing this before you start inputting text, or do you recommend doing this once you've got a document to play with? Um, oh. So my my role my my role is I'm always uh, remediating, so I I'm always changing the styles, the existing styles, but um, I think once you get your styles um, lined up, you could just apply them to all your future documents so that it's. It's, uh, it's static. It's, it's always going to be those settings. So once you've set it, it yes. stays. Yes, you could. For stuff you create, not stuff you open from something Yeah, you, else. Could, you could set it that way. Yeah. Um, okay, so this particular document now looks really different because I did remove all of the inline styling. And then um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about that semantic structure and where uh, the next heading level should be. And I'll, I'll ask for some um, uh, participation from um, those in attendance. So just visually looking at the document, what's the next logical heading level on this uh, in terms of the content? Okay, so on this 
case its headings and what what would be the next level that would we should apply okay so we're not going to jump from h1 to h3 or the from h1 to h4 i'm just noting that because a lot of times when people don't realize that the headings actually are adding semantic structure that people will just focus on how pretty a particular heading looks or the font size works better for them in terms of layout, not realizing that they could just change it easily on the style section. So again, um, I'm selecting that line, that heading um, uh, content, and then I'm going to go look for the next level heading, uh, heading two. All I got to do on the style pane is hit H2, and it's already styled for me. Um, instead of going to that modify section again, I'm just going to go ahead and look for the next H3 um, so that we could apply that. And then um, I'll give you all time to start thinking about how to modify that yourselves. Um, overview seems like it's uh, a, the next logical heading level. What level should we apply here? Okay, so people are saying three. Um, again, we're going from one to two to three. So I'm just going to go ahead and select H3 in that style section. Um, there is an empty return that is just became more obvious when I apply that H3. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that by just getting to that line and hitting the backspace. Um, and uh, I'll use the down arrow. So it goes overview. So it goes, it, it went like this. Uh, H1 is accessibility quick start guide. The next level is headings for H2. After that, it says overview. That's, we decided that's at H3. There's content that's styled as body text. Um, I'm down arrowing and then there's an empty return. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And then the next line says best practices. So what should best practices be? Uh, what head, heading level should that be? All right, someone's saying H3. Why isn't it an H4, Alicia? I don't know. I thought, I mean, I would argue that there, it's kind of at the same level of importance as overview, potentially, and then that's where you look at the heading structure. Okay, so it's at the same level of importance. I think that's a great way of, of saying it in terms of uh, how we determine if it's structured. It's not a subheading of overview, right? So, um, I'm going to go ahead, like, so right now my cursor is in the middle of the word. It's not highlighting the word, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the H3. And everything on that line got changed to the H3. I, that's just really important to, to note um, for this particular reason. Some styles are attributes of a, of a particular line. For instance, if you look above, um, right below heading, where it says sources, um, there are links to uh, some websites. Um, so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to highlight uh, web access, which is going to the web access uh, uh, website. And um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear that. And uh, it's not saying that there's really a style right now. But I do know that it's an HTML link. So I'm going to go to the styles and look for HTML. Um, there's actually quite a few uh, possibilities. There's HTML, acronym, address, citation, code, definition, keyboard, pre-formatted, sample, typewriter, variable, and then hyperlink. So I'm going to go ahead and select that hyperlink. Um, and what that does is it's going gonna, it's gonna to help give me um, uh, some styling for that. So like um, it'll apply visited and unvisited uh, rules to it. Um, but it's, again, it's more of an attribute for that particular, and it's not applying to the whole line. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that for um, just those three. And I'm going to try to be careful to just get that content. And this is also true in HTML as well, where you could apply attributes. Okay, so I got that those okay we're down to best practices i'm going to delete the body text and then this is the last thing i'm going to show you is about 
uh, bulleted list and um, uh, what Anna had mentioned about the, the, the WYSIWYG or the What You See editor under the home uh, ribbon. Um, this particular list paragraph was created by using the home ribbon. Um, uh, there's a visual interface that shows you how to, uh, you know, that it's a bullet. Or if I use that, there's a little pull down where I could change uh, the type of bullet. And then I could also make it a numbered list. Um, numbered list indicates that there's some kind of hierarchy to that or of importance to the list. This isn't, it's, it's just a bullet list. But if we look at that draft um, uh, section on the left hand side, it's telling me it's a list paragraph. The problem with this is if I want to indent the bullet, uh, like a, a, a nested bullet, if I hit tab, it automatically changed it to an uh, 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 alpha, a lower alphanumeric but, um, uh, ordered list. So it goes bullet and then it goes lowercase a and it's indented. Um, but on the left hand side, it's still saying list paragraph. The problem with this is uh, it's not going to be indicated for the screen reader that it does have um, an indented uh, list. But in the future, if I want to change the spacing on this, I can't go to list paragraph and apply it to all of it. Because what it's going to do, it's going to restyle it and it's going to re-indent it justify it to the left hand side and then I'm going to have to go manually do it instead it's better to use um, bullet list one bullet list two so if um, if you look up here um, I'm going to go ahead and try to find that on this list of styles um, there we go so it's listed as list bullet and then list bullet two list bullet three list bullet four so what I'll do is I'll hit that list bullet and then it's, uh, it's got rules, so it's applying it further to the left. Um, the, the bullet below that, which I uh, now have as an alpha list, um, I'm going to go ahead and hit list bullet two. And then just notice um, that it's indented a little bit to the right. Um, it's still using the same icon uh, bullet um, or label. It's just, it's just to the right a little bit, and it's the same font, the same font um, size. Um, but now I have more control. If I, do, if I did indeed have a nested bullet, I could um, change just the listed list bullet too. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that, even though I'm going to change that at the end. But I would do the same way. I'm going to do modify, and then um, I'm going to go to that format option, and on here, the bullet is actually listed under numbering. So I'm going to select that option. And then there's numbers and then there's bullets. And then I could get, uh, uh, let's do a, ah, I'll do a check mark. Um, in here, you could also um, put custom bullets as well. You could define a new bullet. Um, but I'll do a check mark here and then say OK. And um, so visually now, um, for the nested bullet, there's a check mark there. Um, and it's, again, we're, we could see that it's de being defined as a list bullet too. Um, and then also when we export this to Acrobat, we'll notice a difference. Give me a second, Joe, I wanna see what happens with our current list. Not supported in this document. Not supported in this document. Oh, interesting. Accessibility. Not support. So this, according to me, the list that's there currently, I don't see a list at all. There is no list items for me whatsoever. Okay, and again, the reason for that is we we use that. It's a paragraph. It's it's uh it's list paragraph, but it was also formatted with this WYSIWYG up on top, the the home ribbon of visual indicators on there instead of the style pane. So what I'm what I'm doing now is I'm going to go ahead and um, select the bullets and hit. Um, this bullet and um, now I got it. Um, I think that's all I'm going to do so that you all could have the time to figure out what is the structure, what is the semantic structure of the current layout, how should it be done, um, and then there's some um, 
uh, and there is rhyme and reason to this. You could predict how this document is uh, laid out. It's, um, it's, uh, you don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, just focus on applying the headings, uh, playing around with the styles, change the font sizes. You could also change the colors. You could add background to the color. Um, I'll come around and help those who are here for this workshop. Um, and then uh, uh, for the recording, we'll go ahead and jump to the next section. Okay, so we're gonna regroup here. And um, this was exciting because uh, I noticed that a lot of folks out there were, as I was explaining things, were applying it to our unremediated file. So um, made a lot of progress. And then the questions that you had when we went around were very specific. So um, I was able to jump around for some folks. Some folks were asking about uh, images and the table that's in here. So let's first uh, go back to, um, I'm gonna go to the view and uh, the print layout and notice that the images reappear when we do that. The first image on here is, um, I'm just gonna call it the Burko logo. Um, it's not our official logo, but it was, I think, at one point, something that was being considered. Um, so if I right click on that image, at the very bottom, it says format picture. So I'm gonna go to that. Um, I'm gonna have to move the style pane out of the way. And then um, under format picture, uh, layout and properties option, it opens up uh, text box and alt text. So I'm gonna open up alt text and then there's two places for input there. There's the title and then there's the description. We're gonna uh, ignore the title and just go straight to the description. So for this one, it is um, the Burko logo. So I'll go ahead and spell out Berkeley, uh, Burko Berkeley Resource Center for online education. And then I'm gonna write logo for that. And I'll go to the next image. Actually, you know what I could do as well? Um, I, I should show you this feature real quick. Um, let me see how much time we got. Okay, we got another 20 minutes before I wanted to hand things over. So um, there is an important part. If you go to review and um, Let's see. Oh, no, it's not that on, on, uh, on the Apple or the Mac format. It's under review. If you go to file and you say uh, under inspect document, check for issues, and we check for accessibility, it's going to go through and locate the images that are missing alt text for me. So um, it's telling me that picture three and picture four are missing alt text. Um, and why I should be, um, why I should fix it. So if you, if you, if we missed it, that check for accessibility will help you catch it. Um, so that's really important. So if you, again, I'm going to go to right click, format picture, um, under the layout and properties, under the description. Now for this particular image, it's a, a smiley face with a thumbs up. And um, it's not necessarily adding to the meaning of this document, other than to represent a place where we could provide a null tag, N-U-L-L, -L, um, which means that it's eye candy. It doesn't, we don't need to describe it. Um, and the way that we do it is just a quote, unquote. We don't need to put a space in there. Um, we don't need to write decorative image either, just quote unquote. Um, and then I'll go to the next one. Joe, can you, can you run through how to do the inspector again? Because I think that's really important. And, and repeat again how it does it, what the difference is between the Mac and PC. Okay. Um, so at the very end of remediating your, your document, I, I, I always encourage my team to go to, um, uh, to review it for accessibility. So on the Windows machine, it's under file and then inspect document. It says check for issues. 
and we're going to check for accessibility. And what it's doing is the first part, it's looking for uh, missing alt text. Um, and then so it'll locate it. So it's saying picture four is missing and then it, it actually finds it and shows you, shows you where it's at. The next um, item on this report is a no header row table. Okay, so I was gonna jump to table um, right after I, I did this next alt text. Um, and then it's telling me there's infrequent headings as well in this document. And that's because I didn't go, I didn't finish adding headings, but it's, it notices that there's a lot of content and it's not break, broken up enough. Um, and then also it's showing like um, all of my empty returns or empty spaces. Um, so it's, and it's telling me where they're at. Um, so uh, there's an example of heading list and I manually added spaces on there. So that's why it's, it's saying that's not the best way to, to um, show any um, kind of heading levels for that particular example. Um, but yeah, it's, it's finding the empty returns for me. So that's, that's really nice. Okay, so, sorry, clarify where it is on the Mac, just so people understand the difference. On the Mac, um, it's going to be under review on the top navigation. So, so on, on this particular one, it says home, insert, design, layout, reference, mailing, and then it gets to review. And then it'll be in here, uh, check for accessibility. All right, so the, this thing did show um, there's no header row um, on the table. So I did sneak a table at the very bottom. Oh, actually, no, I need to go to this. Um, this image. So the image is of the, the Campanile or Sather Tower. Um, and uh, it's totally out of context, but I wanted to use this as um, uh, an example of how alternative text will, de will change depending on how the image is used. So if this particular image um, was in an architecture course, then the alternative text could focus on the example that it's representing in terms of architectural style, um, or if it's you know talking about columns or bell towers, then it could be very specific to that. If it's a history uh, text, then it could be you know specific to the the historical era. Um, if this was a novel, um, this also has a couple hands next to it. It could be talking about that, you know, this particular character was able to squeeze the tower together um, with her bare, bare hands. Um, but it's going to change depending on the, the context that the image is, is representing. Um, right now it has no alt text. Um, I'll go ahead and hit uh, format, um, go to the alt text, and then just, I'm just going to write bow tower. Um, let me just say example of bell tower. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and close the accessibility checker, get to the table. And uh, this is a normally formatted table. Um, it's important to know not to use tables for layout. It used to be used a lot in the late 90s, early 2000s, but it's not accepted anymore. It causes a lot of problems. Um, only use uh, tables or try to only use tables to show data relationships. And this means that there's going to be um, a, a header row or a header column and then data that corresponds to that. Um, and so on Word, um, what, the way, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it and we're going to go to table properties. I'll pause there just really quick so that you can all see that. Okay, table properties and then um, on the top layout, um, on the top navigation as well, there is the, um, uh, the, the table and layout option now. So let me cancel this real quick. I'm going to go to that table and layout, and then I'm going to right click so that we could see the that uh, table properties 
a little better. So under row, um, it's, uh, it's, there's two options here. Allow row to break across pages and then repeat as header row at the top of each page. Um, what we do is we want repeat as header row on top of page. Let me uncheck that. I'm going to highlight that top row again. Go to that table properties and I want to make sure, yeah, the repeat as header row is, is checked there. Um, and then under the top navigation within that uh, design and layout, um, there is that option for header row and it is checked. Um, the first column doesn't need to be checked on here. Let me uncheck that. Okay. And then um, there's been different uh, discussion about, um, let me go to that table properties again, that option under row, allow row to break across pages. I've seen it both. People are saying to check and uncheck it. Um, Israel, can you do me the favor and make sure it is checked? Because I want to use yours as an example for Lucy. Um, I'm going to say OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, I'm going to go to the last cell in this table, and I'm going to hit tab. And then it's giving me um, another row. And I'm, I'm going to hit that a couple times. And then what it did is it, it did break. It, it actually jumped to a new page there. Um, so that it's the table isn't uh, starting on one page and it's going on another page. So I'm going to go back on that table properties. I'm going to uncheck that allow rows to break across pages and see if it did anything. No, it didn't do anything there. I think that's for multi-column tables, Joe, where if you have a horizontal a page break, so for like a left and right side of a layout like that, oh, okay. that's where that's effective. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more research on that as well, and I'm going to put it in the discussion section. Um, uh, the other thing is under table. Um, notice that I have the preferred width as 100% and I'm not using pixels. I'm just trying to avoid fix width pixel anything now. And that, that just allows um, students that have visual um, impediments to zo use zoom text or just zoom in um, a lot easier. And that's also true on, uh, on the web. Just use percentages if possible. Okay, there's nothing else on here that I, I want to refer to. Anna, did you have a question? Yeah, I had a question about the header row thing. So um, right now in this table, all three rows are header rows. So don't you only want one header row? You just want, yeah, it's just, it's usually going to be just the top one. Word doesn't do header rows well. Sure. Uh, right now I can't seem to designate one as a header. I have to uncheck all of them. Like, if, if, if because I think because with under table properties, we have that repeat as row head. I, well, I don't know. It's just when I go to uncheck it in the little thing up here, header row, it unchecks it for all three. And I can't. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Well, that's why I wanted to run it by Lucy and see what she's experiencing. But the screen readers that I've spoken to, um, they don't like um, the way Word handles heading, header rows. The things is that, mo again, like this is um, part one of a series, or part one for when we get to Adobe uh, Acrobat, and we could, we have a lot more control in Acrobat for tables. Okay. So we could assign those, and we could do some scopes with those as well. Yeah. Screen, readers, screen readers just don't understand tables in Word. It's, it's the one place that screen readers fail in Word is tables. <laughs> Table tools. Hey, I didn't say that. <laughs> So um, I'm going to highlight this and then see that there's this uh, on the right hand side, repeat header rows. That's that I think that's what the option I was looking for. Um, see what happens when I select that it on the next page. The what I selected as a header row, it, it's populating on the next page. 
and it doesn't work normally. Like I, you have to uncheck it here. Um, and what I was doing earlier is under the, the design, there is that header row. But let me double check real quick. Again, I'm gonna go back to, um, I'm gonna hit the design. Sorry, layout, repeat header row. Ah, see how it jumped? It, it separated it. I'm gonna uncheck it. It's, it, to me, it's acting kind of strange. Tables are strange. <laughs> Let me go to that design. Yeah. Okay, so what I did um, is I went to the design, I unchecked header row, and then I applied, I went to layout, and then I, I applied that repeat header row, and, uh, and then it, it, it appeared and, and it's disappearing. So now it's working so that it, it is populating if it goes to another page. So you have to uncheck it in design first. Yes. Yeah, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click and look at the properties again, just to make sure that repeat header row is still checked, which it isn't. You see that? Yeah. And then so I'm going to say, okay, ah, you see that now? So what it did is it, it jumped to the next page so that it's not split across pages anymore. So apparently we could do one or the other. Sometimes I just think it's witchcraft, but there must be a rhyme or reason to this. Um, let me, I'm going to do it one more time. Um, table properties. I'm going to make sure. Okay, repeat as hetero. Okay, so Israel, if you can make sure that, it, that the last section is, it does say that um, so that we can check it. Okay, so we did tables. That's the most important thing for um, the tables. Um, making sure that they're consistent. We don't want to merge the cells um, and that we are just using them for uh, that to show data relationships. Um, oh, actually, there is one other thing. If you right click on the table itself, there is an insert caption option. Okay, and this is another thing that I am doing a lot more consistently now is adding captions to tables because that's what we want on, on the web as well. We want our tables to have captions. Um, so this one would be uh, lectures, table two lectures and, um, and media. I'll just say, I'm not sure why it's saying table two. It's not letting me erase that. Um, there must be. There's gonna be a set, but you're on the second page of the table. No, I, I have the same no, I wonder if you delete that table one description above it, if it would then remove Well, it. if I, sometimes if I right click it, um, nope, it's not give, letting me change the um, auto number, but um, let me see, table one, there you go. No, I, yeah, okay, I manually changed it. It went away that way, so. Um, and it, do you not have to have an alt text description? Is that um, so I did that once and Lucy, it came out for Lucy as long description. Um, but when I went to, and I'm going to be jumping around here, but this is great. It's a question in context. When I went to that file um, inspect document, okay, it's asking me to save first. I'll just save this as two. Oh, it's in, I'm, I'm inspecting it for something else. Um, file, check for issues, uh, check for accessibility. Um, there's a warning. No, there's no errors and no, no, well, actually there's no warning. Let's see. Oh, there's blank rows. It's not giving me, it's not dinging me for the alt text right now. In the past, it would, it was uh, coming up um, alt text. Maybe they updated it. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, let's, let's that's why I want to do the manual test. So we'll see what, what happens with, uh, with Lucy. As all accessibility, the manual testing is the true test. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm close the document in the meantime, because we don't want to confuse the documents. Microsoft Word. Dialogue. Okay. 
So the alt text is, it would be same thing like as the properties on there. Okay, um, Israel, um, can you save your document and you don't mind sharing it with us? Okay, and I think the easiest way for you to share the document would be in the course. Um, if you go to the discussion. Zoom participant ID. Zoom pro account. Zoom pro account. Um, um, I'm going to start. Please share your documents here. And then there's an attach option on the discussion. Schedule button. New options. Zoom participant ID. Workshop three. Workshop three. I want to. Okay, and then yeah, we're gonna if once we get this, um, we'll have twenty minutes with Lucy to do the um, uh, this the manual testing, um, and then I'll just remind you that um, any updates will go in this dis discussion section. Um, when we get the video, we'll post it here. We'll let you know through an email. Um, also, um, this particular. Um, B course does have a mailing list built into it, so I'll be able to send out announcements this way as well. Um, if there's anyone in your unit or department or any of your campus friends that are interested in this, please ask them to sign up um, so, and uh, provide any feedback as well. Um, we do want to start gathering people on campus that are interested in accessibility so that we could keep building that community. Um, okay, Israel, you're, you're uh, making progress on that? Yep. Great. Okay, so it's in module three in a discussion. There's a discussion link. Event out of list main landmark discussion topics heading level one. As you type in this field, the list of results will be on. Yeah, all right. So here we go. We now got the same document up. Graph. And I'm going to start reading from the top. Graphic Berkeley Resource Center for Online Education logo. So we've got a label on that graphic now. I'm going to go headings. Oh, oops, sorry. H. Uh, I forgot to turn browse mode on. There we go. Accessibility quick start guide heading level one. Headings heading level two. Overview heading level three. Best practices heading level three. Lists heading level two. Overview heading level three. So I can now move through the document much more quickly and find the section I want. Best practices heading level three. Bulleted lists heading level four. So I want to look at bulleted lists. Bullet compared to numbered lists. Blank. Heading level four numbered lists. Numbered lists demonstrate relationships by implying ranking or chronology of importance. They imply items in a series, such as procedural steps. So I got there, I was able to read that. I didn't have to read any of the other stuff. I was just looking for the list sections. I could read that quickly. So do you have a list in here, Israel? Um, Did you create lists? <laughs> they were already there. But they weren't, they remember in the, in the unremediated file, it told me there was no list available. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Not supported in this doc, justified. Oops. Uh, Not supported in this. Okay, so apparently the screen reader won't read lists. Graph. The following guidelines and not supported in this document. You are supported in this document. So let me go back to that heading. Bulleted lists heading level four. Bulleted. So that is numbered right there. Yeah. Chronology of importance. They imply Where items the bullets, in a series. You're on a blank. You're on a oh. Right they imply items in a series. Oh, that such is as a procedural list. steps. Okay. So this also could be the screen reader I'm using might not support lists. I didn't know lists weren't supported. I thought they were. I, I'm, there's three different screen readers. The one I'm using right now is my preference. It may not support as many items as other screen readers. So I think lists are supported with some screen readers. But you saw that we got the graphics. You saw that we got the headings. I can actually pull up a list of. Paint. 
Status bar, status bar. Oops. Word count 1,300. Wrong, wrong button, sorry. Elements list dialog. Tree view. Web access three of 19 level zero. So I've got all the lists, all the links here in the document I can skim. Type, grouping. Head, annotations rate. Headings radio button. So if I want to just look at the headings. Tree view. Level three numbered lists two of two. Level one avoid inline styling expanded three of seven. And none of this stuff I could have done with this document in the unremediated document. So you see it makes it much faster and more effective for me to go through the document. Except for the lists. Sorry about that. <laughs> Accessibility quicks. Questions? The, the table? Oh, table. Da, 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 da. Table has long description with three rows and four columns. Level one row, one column, one presentation. Column two audio. So I'm going to just use my table navigation. Table has long description with three rows and four columns. Level one row, one column, three transcript. Column four handout. Edge of table. <coughs> row two introduction slide handout. Column three introduction transcript. Column two introduction MP3. So you'll notice it's telling me introduction on each of these items. If introduction wasn't actually marked as a header, it would just say MP3, it would just say transcript. Column one introduction lecture. Edge of table. Column two introduction MP3. Row three conclusion MP3. So that, that's actually the, the data, that cell does say conclusion MP3, the it, one above that said introduction MP3. Oh, does it? In yeah, the cell? So okay. The, heading, the headings doesn't seem to be working. No. You're not okay. getting the association. So okay. What is the long description on here? Does it actually read it? Is that the caption that's the long description? I think so. Column okay. four slide you handout. Add all text, right? it, edge, of, edge of table. Column three transcript. It's a title and description. I yes. Column so four. Oh, out of table, yeah. table one. Okay. Lectures and associated. Table has long description with three context. rows and four columns. Level one, row one, column one, presentation. How do I get the long description? It's, it is the alt text. Oh. He, he added it and he oh, did get okay. the error. He did get the error. <laughs> okay. So that was it. That's really interesting. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Okay, let's, um, let me see what time it is real quick. Because I might be- 10.52 AM. 1052. Okay. Um, Do you want me to stop here real quick? Um, Zoom Pro account tab. Tab control. Tab. <coughs> Schedule button. Back to meeting Come button. On. Accessibility. Topic. Zoom Pro account. Zoom I'm just going to give everyone a teaser control. for the next workshop. Status. Busy drop down. I'm trying to get it to stop. Can you want to do it, Scott, quickly? Oh, sure, yeah. I right, so stop sharing the screen. Yeah, stop sharing the screen. Yeah. <laughs> not, not doing anything when I click. Stop sharing my screen. Huh. There we so go. Oh, yeah, 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 that's the trick. Okay. And then sorry, that's it. You, you guys let me know when you're ready. We're ready, go. Oh, I'm talking to Scott. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay, so what I'm going to do um, as a teaser for the next one, I'm going to download that unremediated document again. Um, I have uh, Israel's as well. Um, so I'll, I'll download both of them, or I've downloaded both of them, and I'm going to export both of them as well to Acrobat. So there's a couple of different ways to export to Acrobat. I'm going to use I'm going to use the tab. Um, yes, let's do that. Okay. Zoom participant ID. And uh, everyone could do this um, as well. On the top ribbon, there's an Acrobat option, and then create PDF. Um, okay, yeah, and he, he's already added a, the ending remediated, so we know what it is. Um, I'll go ahead and hit save. And let's just make sure it opens in um, the full version of Adobe Acrobat. 
Ah, <laughs> um, Microsoft Word has stopped working. <laughs> okay, let's restart it. I love it. Uh, Word is running into problems with the Acrobat. Okay, this is good to know today instead of the next workshop. <laughs> Okay, so it restarted it. Let me try it one more time. Acrobat, create PDF. Let me see what these options are real quick. Okay, so convert word headings to bookmarks is, is able, enable accessibility and reflow with tag PDF. That's really good. Okay, let me just say okay. Um, Those are actually very, not very good, Joe. Those are critical. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's, I'm, good, I'm saying it's good because it's default. Yeah. Um, let me see if I download it on the desktop, if that helps any. Okay. Okay, that seemed to work. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'll show you how to tell if a Word file is tagged. Um, uh, on the tools section on the top navigation, um, it gives us all the different options that are available. At the very bottom, Let's see. Okay, it's the uh, second from the bottom. Accessibility. I'm going to hit add. That shows up on the right column now. So I'll hit accessibility. And then I'm going to select reading order. And then I'm going to move that panel over so it's out of the way. And then I'm going to say show order panel. And then um, a couple things are happening. This, this is called the touch up reading order. And on the left-hand side, it's actually telling me the reading order. So there's numbers indicated for each section of content. So uh, the first thing that's on here, um, actually, it's number 11. It's the Burkle logo. And then it goes to Accessibility Quick Start Guide. There's an empty return on there. That's one. So that's another reason why we don't want returns, empty returns. But um, on the left-hand side, and this is a really quick sneak peek. I'm gonna right click on there, and I'm gonna say look at the tags. There's a difference between the touch up reading order and the tagging section. The tags are what actually a screen reader uh, is gonna have access to. So this first section, um, the first tag on here is an MDP tag. So it was correct, there's, no, there's nothing there. If I right click, I could just delete that tag. And then now I got the figure as the first um, item. I don't really don't need that or want that. I can move that down below the H1. Um, and then I could open the H1, and then it's telling me accessibility quick start. And it's actually spaced correctly, Lucy. Um, and then there's a, a P tag. Um, and then it goes H2. So when I'm looking at something like this, I'm, I'm showing that someone took time to add the tags, to add styles. They're conscious about that. I would say this would be a pretty easy document for us to, um, I mean, it's pretty much remediated. There are things that I would go through and check and to make sure, maybe add some stuff um, onto it as well. The other thing that I'll show you really, really quickly before our time ends in two minutes is uh, the metadata. So if I go to file and then properties. Is this in Word or is this an Acrobat? I'm still in Acrobat. Okay. Um, uh, Israel added uh, the metadata accessibility quick start as the title. His name is on here as the author. The subject is best practices for accessibility. Um, and then under advanced. You did not show how to do that before. The, so you know. I didn't. See, that's, that's, I'm giving you a teaser for the next, oh, you know. You don't add metadata to the Word doc, is that correct? Or does that have to the PDF? No, you do. Israel <laughs> added it to the Word document ah. and it properly exported I see. here. Um, and then under initial view, it always says file name and it should say document title. So I'm going to say okay. And then um, that's like our teaser um, for the next one. So, so um, we'll learn in the next session. Okay. Yes. Um, so we'll get more into this for the next one. And um, I will also have a completely unremediated. PDF to show you how to add titles to that as well. So we're at 10.59. Any last questions? Okay, thanks everyone for coming and for participating. This was wonderful, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.